Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Layer Process Audits, uh, Getting Executives and Top Leaders to Buy-In. I'm your host, Rachel Perdon, Marketing Director of Beacon Quality. We are a mobile auditing software. And today, I'm very excited to be joined by over 100 attendees, all of you, as well as Marie Sitzdemar of the Luminous Group, who will be walking you through how to get your manager, leaders, executives uh, to buy in and actively promote your, and even participate in your layer process audits. Yet, I'm sure a lot of what Murray will be going over could easily be applied to any quality initiative. As Murray presents, I will, and you wanna ask a question, simply type your question into the question section of your GoToWebinar panel. And then towards the end of the presentation, I will read them aloud so Murray can answer them for you. So quick intro on Murray Sitsamar. We asked Murray to be our speaker because of his great reputation in helping hundreds of companies become more effective and efficient. And as some of you may already know, uh, Murray was an AIAG com committee leader on development of the CQI8 second edition industry reference document layer process audits guideline. Sorry, my, of course my computer is trying to restart <laughs> with updates right in the minute, beginning of a webinar. Um, so. Well, I could pick up from there if you want. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for the nice introduction. So I'm glad to be with you today. Um, I, I want to share with you some thoughts about how you can increase the value of layered process audits in your organization. Like many other initiatives, it doesn't go very far unless it has top management support. And the truth is sometimes top management doesn't know what a layered process audit is, maybe because of the name or other initiatives or things by a different name that accomplish the same. So we wanna give you some tools, techniques to be able to talk to top leaders to show this is something important for the organization. So here's our agenda. Uh, I wanna answer the question, why should top leaders buy into layered audit? And the three bullet points here are the, the crux of the answer is it allows you to verify requirements. It allows you to engage the entire workforce. And when I say entire, I really mean cross function as well as whole body, right? Not just the arms and legs, but also minds and creativity of the workforce. It's a subtle thing that these layered audits even though it sounds like it's a check and a, only a verification, it engages the workforce. And the last item we're gonna talk about within this short webinar is that LPA is Monday work. It's not Friday work when you get around to it. It's not something you do if you have a little extra time. It's something that's important and we have to do it. Some of you may have been on the webinar we did about two months ago that was, uh, I think we called it LPA 101 that talked about what LPA is. So this builds upon that, and I hope you'll, um, you'll see value in it. When I prepared for this presentation, Rachel, I kind of brainstormed what would be important, what would people be interested in. I thought, this, how, how's, what's the best way to sell this to top leaders? And I thought, well, maybe I should talk with some of my clients that have implemented layered audits. Probably a bell-shaped curve in terms of what their initial enthusiasm was. Some understood it as value, some saw it as a requirement, and some fought it. But after they learned about what it was, they developed a passion. So I reached out to about seven clients, heard back from about five of them within 24 hours, and you'll see on some of the following pages some uh, quotes, some things that they're telling me that I could share with other top leaders in organizations. Very good. So before we begin, I would like to find out a little bit of, about all of you. And Rachel, could you um, put up, we have two polling questions. They won't be up too long. So if you would take a look at them and respond. The first one, we'd like to find a little bit about what your role is in your organization. So if you would select one, are you executive suite? like CEO, CFO, VP level, maybe at a corporate level. 
Are you top leadership within a site leadership team? That might be an engineering director, plant manager, site director, and direct reports to him or her. Are you a manager or supervisor? Are you a layered process audit administrator? Or maybe something else we didn't think of. So please take a moment, select the one that best describes you so that we have a range of people involved. Oh, if you've heard me talk about layered process audits before, I'm kind of on a campaign to change the name. Um, I really don't like the word audit. Uh, audit implies that you're looking for a problem and what you know from maybe past webinars or training or what you've seen, what you heard today is, it's not really about looking for problem, it's looking to verify that the desired parameters and standards are in place. So Rachel, if we could close that poll and yeah. see the distribution. So we had about 74 uh, votes or, or enter in their information. So I'm gonna close this and then share the results. Okay, awesome. So most are manager supervisors. We have a few that are at the C level. That's great. Um, some top leaders and uh, so over 10% are LP administrators. Great, that's gonna help me maybe uh, tailor some of my editorial comments. The second question that Rachel is gonna put up is, how strongly does your top leadership group currently support layered process audits? Uh, first choice is, you can't really say because you haven't started. So if those of you early on in implementing LPA or layered verifications, I choose the first. Uh, they can't spell LPA. Uh, the third choice is it's more talk than action. And the fourth is where we hope they'll all be within six months is that they're strong advocates and participants. So I'd like you to evaluate where are they today, which one best describes top leadership group support in your organization. So about 77%, 80% have uh, put in their answer there. Give it a few more seconds. Response, Rachel. So far, uh, more talk than action. More talk than action. Well, I think you've come to the right place and I hope to help you out. Great, so uh, right. should I close this out? Yeah, that would be great, that would be great. So we're gonna start with uh, the first of the three sections. We said uh, verification to requirements. In each of these, these three sections that I'm gonna share with you, I kind of have a similar model. I'm gonna share with you um, what you could tell top leaders why they should why they should support, why top leaders should support layered process verifications. We're gonna show you some economic benefit Senior leaders are driven by profitability, return on investment, uh, commitment to, to shareholders, and a lot of that maps into dollars. It's not always a bad thing. That's a good barometer for an organization as long as they're making the right trade-offs. So we'll talk about what the economic benefits are at individual, department, and company level. And then I'll share with you some of those comments that top leaders have emailed to me about why they think layered process audits is important. So the first point I have here is, you know, is it conforming or non-conforming? That's the, at the crux, that's what a layered process verification does and we wanna build from there. That foundation alone is very valuable. And there are so many things that could go wrong within an organization, in manufacturing, in design, in shipping and logistics. A lot of people have to do the right things at the right time and when they don't, we have customer issues, we have downtime, we have management pulled into situations. Many sets of eyes in the organization can be utilized to verify and help get things right the first time. People sometimes make mistakes, sometimes standards aren't set correctly, and a layered process audit, just say LPA from now on, and an LPA by walking around and in a disciplined fashion checking not anything, not everything, but certain elements within the workplace that might go wrong that cause a, a severe problem. So a severe is a relative term. Top leaders should want to know that things are right. When you're doing LPAs, you set up a layered system. That's what the layered stands for, from top leadership all the way down to direct supervisors. 
that top leader holds that pyramid in place by holding accountability and performing the exact same verifications that are done at the lower levels of the organization. If we're only relying on one person to do the checking, it might not get done, or it might be missed, or they might not get around to it. So our first part is to know that things are right, and then when things aren't right, make sure that we could correctly, could, could fix them quickly back to standard, back to where they should be. In the process of doing that, if we can capture the data, what things are more likely to go wrong, we analyze that, maybe through scorecards, looking at corrective actions, looking at trend charts, Pareto's, then we could apply forward thinking and proactively prevent things from going wrong. Maybe step up the game. Maybe there's a better way to ensure standards are in place, higher levels of error proofing, uh, reducing reliance on human beings, allows us to get more things right the first time. So that's our key selling point to top leadership. We get more things right the first time. When things go wrong, there's a cost to it. Economic benefits of layered process verifications or LPA, reduce scrap and rework. That subtle noise that we're always paying some attention to, maybe it doesn't leak out to customers, but it's material, it's labor, or utilizing production time that could be used to make your product correctly. Customer complaints can be very costly, depending on what your industry you're serving, uh, how many complaints, if they happen after launch, if they repeat mistakes, customer complaints with sorting, containment, um, attention to your customer takes away from what we should be doing and focusing on people and getting things right. Uh, we just, over time, it's kind of re reactive costs, sorting, containment, expediting. We want to get more things right the first time. It has a big impact on safety, right? Lost days, near misses, that ties in with employee morale, improves your quality metrics, whether it's first time quality, PPM, test yields in, in engineering, it's productivity, delivery, and you could see there's a range of things. If you wanted, you could put together a quick spreadsheet and show what are the current costs that you're trying to prevent and where could you gain value. Three months, six months into an LPA, you should be able to see that you're moving the needle. If you're not moving the needle, maybe you're asking the wrong questions, or maybe people aren't, aren't doing the layered audits as scheduled. When you're doing LPA as well, you will move the needle, reduce costs, and improve your key metrics. This is what some top leaders have told me. A couple of quotes here. Um, first one, I call it a cheap and quick way to fix issues before the product becomes non-conforming product. Okay? Cheap and quick. If you could find the problem at its source and correct it, that's going to save a lot of money. Another quote I got was, LPAs verify the way you manufacture your product instead of inspecting your product, right? We all know that inspection is too late. We can't inspect in quality. We could use inspection to protect the customer, but if we've already manufactured a defect, didn't follow process, didn't hold standard, then we've got costs and it's too late to erase them. We can only find them. And the third quote on this page is, it easily flexes to validate corrective actions arising from customer defects or an external audit. That's a great point. LPA should be flexible. It's not a one-time rigid um, check sheet. It's not a predetermined checklist, checklist that's used across the plant. It needs to fit the risks, the current concerns of the organization. Just four more quotes that I got that really related to validation, why, it's, why validation is important to leaders. Um, LPAs are a management tool, not a production tool. I really like that a lot. Um, some people might even say it's a management tool, not a quality tool, because it often gets delegated to the quality department. But that's really ridiculous when you think about it. Quality does not have manufacturing or engineering people reporting to it. Quality might facilitate layered audits. They definitely should participate, but LPAs are a management tool to make sure that the organization, the operation, the engineering, the logistics are operating right the first time. A second quote on this page was nice. Provide management with information they normally would not have access to. Right? So 
to management, maybe end of month reporting, maybe quarterly presentations to executives. But with a layered process audit, when management does an audit once a week, they're on the floor, they're asking the questions related to top risks, they're hearing directly from the frontline workforce. It's like a window right into the operation rather than weeding out through data analysis and just reacting when things go wrong. The third quote, ability to know what is, go what is really going on without micromanaging the plant floor. When LPA becomes a habit, then operators, uh, frontline people that are involved with the audits aren't suspicious, they're not defensive, they understand the transparency of a layered audit. Transparency might be a really important word, word here. We're not trying to find people doing things incorrect. We're not trying to look for problems. We're being transparent. We're saying quality is so challenging and it's so expensive when things go wrong that everyone in the organization, yes, even the plant manager, even the president, is going to walk on the floor, go to the frontline operations, and verify that key things are done right every day, every week, etc. The last quote in this section is um, LPAs, are, it's an easy way to define and verify adherence to critical deficiencies in the business. So once you identify what's most important, we like to do that with FMEA or some kind of subjective analysis, that's where you're going to focus layered audits, not on some textbook questions, not on, text, on questions that maybe a quality manager decides to write about calibration and following work instructions, but go to the real risks for that line or that station or that cell. We're going to go to the next section. Um, why should top leaders endorse layered audits? It's because it engages the workforce. So as we're going through these, feel free to type in your questions, send your questions to Rachel, so we'll have those at the end. What's this about engaging the workforce? So I said that the whole workforce, the entire workforce, that leverages your human capital. A lot of organizations will say, people are our most important asset, but what do they do about it? Well, LPAs become like a little bit of a, a, a spark to light that fire, to encourage people to participate, be engaged with the work, not just do the work that's in the work instruction or to show up and move product, but to think about what they're doing, to make the connection between what their work is and how that impacts the next station or the end of the line or the customer or maybe the end user of that product or service. There's a lot of work that's done on engagement and talks about um, head, heart, and hands. They right? intellectually involve the workforce, emotionally, so people care. That's where you have some people in the organization that show up not just on time, but maybe a little bit early, that not leave when you know the time's up, but leave when the job's over. When some people reach out and say, hey, I've got a little bit more time here. How could I help you? Right? Those are the kinds of emotional connections we want in a workplace to be an exemplary organization, not just someone that's surviving day to day. So why should top leadership buy into layered audit? Because this is going to positively impact our KPIs. It goes beyond verification. Verification is just the tip of the iceberg. But what are the economic benefits? of engagement. Well, when you're appealing to employees' motivations, we draw them in to the work to be done. Not just following work to standards, not just doing what's required, but going above and beyond. What else could I do? How can we improve the process? How could we improve our company? What systems can be strengthened so that we're more competitive? When you have the entire workforce not just a leadership team or managers involved with running the business, but when you engage the entire workforce, things really start to accelerate. Of course, that gives you more business, more revenue, more profit, more employee retention. A lot of potential dollars there, as well as momentum in achieving the company's goals. I hope you're saying this isn't really about quality, right? This is about organizational excellence. 
and that's why top leaders should endorse layered audits. It's a very simple, low-cost tool. There's a couple of things that top leaders have uh, replied to me in my question. Uh, the first one, the most important thing is engagement of salary people with the operators and with the operations. Right? I like that. Right? It shows that we're all in this together. Right? We want all levels within the organization to feel a commitment to getting things right the first time. The second quote, LPAs reduce the filtering that normally goes on when staff communicates with leadership about their area. Sometimes when it's a one-way communication, we only hear what we ask. When you're doing a layered audit, you're going to the workforce. You're interacting. Sure, there should be some questions that are asked off of a checklist, but the idea is to begin a conversation, learn about the workplace. What's going well? What's not going well? When you hear that directly from the front line, you'll have a lot more information to know what the right priorities should be for the organization without being biased by one department or by what you capture in reactive responses. The third one, LPAs not owned and operated by the leader of the organization is a waste of resources and staff will quickly become aware that the effort they are putting in is not being valued. LPA must be driven by the leader to be successful. Right? I like that. That is a nice, strong statement. One of my clients um, emailed me this morning and said, hey, I appreciate that uh, you know, invited me to the webinar, but we're not going to join. They said that uh, they're doing pretty well with top leadership support. They said that top leaders are always pushing for new ideas, and top leaders never say it's good enough. Right? What's an, it's another way to me um, saying that their top leadership understands it's not about just satisfying the requirements, right? That's what verification is. It's going beyond that. So we feel as a, a group of people within the organization aligned towards a goal, working together, responsive to both problems and potential problems. Engagement's a pretty hot topic. There's a lot of information out there. And uh, there was this one article I have here um, by Michael Heller. It was a nice article I found on a quick Google search that had, I think, he had 20 quick ways to increase engagement. They all did not apply to layered audits, but seven of them directly correlated with layered audits. Okay. The first one, celebrate accomplishments. When you're out there on the floor doing a layered audit, interacting with the workforce, nothing wrong with saying, hey, Looks like everything's going right here. Thanks a lot. Right? It looks like the standards are being followed, and on all my five items or my seven items that I check, everything's going fine. Really appreciate that. Right? That keeps out of, out of problems with customers and allows us to get more things right the first time. Quick comment like that is a nice little celebration. Right? For the stories where sometimes people are doing the same job. Just fine, day in, day out, don't get noticed year after year until a problem occurs. Then, all of a sudden, management pays attention. So a layered audit is a way to verify and celebrate accomplishments. As I mentioned, in a layered audit, there's going to be a checklist where you have some disciplined questions that you ask, maybe every shift, every day, once a week. But it also gives you a chance to get employee feedback. Right? Ask, hey, what else could we be doing better? or I see that uh, the line's are running a little bit slower today. What's going on? Like, talk with me about it. And that's the idea of collecting information directly from employees. Third technique here for increasing engagement is to create an open workspace, meaning open dialogue, kind of like an open door policy. Everyone is approachable. You may have a very high title, but you're still involved with getting quality right the first time to support the front line and make sure our customers are happy. Number four, encourage ongoing coaching. Right? Dialogue doesn't have to just be about the questions that are on the check sheet. What else is going on? How are things going? Uh, what problems are you having? Leaders with more experience might be able to share 
their experience with the operators and vice versa. You might have a new, a new manager and uh, by asking questions, developing relationship with frontline employees, they could accelerate, accelerate their learning about the process or the system, allowing them to better manage the organization. Because it's two-way, you give employees a voice, you get to know each other better, you'd be on the personal side, graduations, birthday, what's going on in your life, what's going on with vacation. These really increase engagement. Sharing company information. So when top leaders come in, maybe from out of town, they interact with employees. If that's never done before, that makes a big difference. People talk about that or appreciate it. That even though the president came in from New York or California, right, he or she took 15 minutes on the floor and asked those same questions that my supervisor asked. That must really be important. Third category is LPA is Monday work, right? So I like that term, Monday work. I've been using that a lot with clients when they're working on major initiatives and have trouble getting, overcoming the inertia of the day-to-day -day drudgery. Right? Sometimes the, the bigger goals, we tend to put off, find creative time, and if we don't make the time, it never happens. Let's make the time, not Friday if we have time, well, not Tuesday, but why don't we start the week off? LPA is Monday work. If you wait till Friday, hoping you'll get around to it, what happens if you don't? Right? It gets pushed off to the next week. If LPA is important because it verifies, because it drives engagement, let's make sure it happens. It should be the foundation of every week. Top leader, before they start working on competitive salary surveys, new product proposals, uh, facility decisions, why not kick the tires and make sure that things that should be operating right are? How do you know that? Everyone in your organization is doing layered audits. How do you know that? You yourself are doing layered audits. When you're doing your layered audits, you're looking across, maybe your dashboard, if you're using software like Beacon, or maybe you have a wall chart. Did everyone that was supposed to do an audit in the last seven days do their audit? If not, stop by their office, prod them, encourage them, explain to them, we need to do this to make sure things are right. It saves us money. We know the little problems could suck all your time. We wanna get beyond that. We wanna get above that curve where we're sucked into firefighting mentality. When you force yourself to do layered audits, you'll have fewer nuanced problems that require attention allowing you to focus on the things that are important, like continuous improvement. Only discipline will overcome inertia. So management by walking around is a subset of layered audits, but it's not a layered audit. By doing it formally on a scheduled basis, by tracking that and keeping people accountable, that will overcome the inertia of being in a reactive mode, only dealing with issues when they come up. Discipline, that discipline we need with layered audits is nearly impossible without accountability. Who are they going to be accountable to? If the top leader does not see the importance of layered audits pretty soon, many people in the organization will not be doing their layered audits. Or if they are, maybe they're not going to be completing them accurately. Maybe you get into some pencil whipping. So why should layered audits be bought in by layered management? because we need to do it. We need to do it in order to drive improvement. So I'd like to um, have another polling question that we'll pull up in a minute. So let's pull up that polling question now, Rachel. This would be a good time for that. Okay. So our last polling question on this webinar looks at what you believe your estimated annual cost savings is attributed to layered audits. So uh, where you currently are, many of you don't have, you have that more talk than action with your layered audits, maybe you'll improve it. But what do you think your, your baseline is? If you're currently using LPA, what do you estimate your annual cost savings attributed to LPA to be? 
If you're not doing it, first box, we're not yet doing LPA. If it's pretty small, you don't know. Maybe it's less than 10,000. Is it between 10 and 50? Is your annual savings? And this might be due to scrap, downtime, safety, customer complaints, um, sorting and containment costs, expediting costs. Right? How much are you saving? And the last one, of course, is the, the bigger one, more than a quarter of a million. It's so about 60% have uh, voted or put in their answers there. We'll give it a few more seconds. And we're at 70%. So I'm, I'm going to share the results here. Okay, great. Okay, so half of you are not doing layered audits yet, and those that you are not see pretty small payback. Well, that's interesting. Maybe that'll come out in the Q&A. That might be because it's more talk than do with your, your top leaders. Maybe you'll be able to tell me more about that. When we did a survey about five years ago, um, I think we saw that the average value of layered audits was attributed to be about $72,000. You know, it's really hard to say, you know, how do you exactly measure what the payback is from layered audits? Uh, you, you really can't, but if you track over time, maybe a reduction in scrap, reduction in customer complaints, that would all be, will not all be due to layered audits. I'm sure there are other things that are going on, but I'm sure a fraction of that could be. If you believe the value of layered audits, one, Identify what could go wrong that will have the highest consequences. Identify what risks are most likely. Identify what the causes of those problems are, and then build your questions, right? Customize questions to verify that the correct standards are in place. Then you're gonna move the needle. You definitely would move the needle. All right, we're gonna make that disappear and go to our next slide. So the economic benefits of, of LPA being Monday work, why do it on Monday? Because the benefits are visible, countable, and meaningful. You will measure a difference in KPIs. You will see a difference in workflow on the plant floor. You will see a difference in employee engagement. All that adds up. Less waste means more profit. More profit means we can invest in the future. New equipment, additional training, maybe hiring, maybe enter new markets, all for the good of the company and the people that work for it. Economic benefit of doing more things right the first time. Some organizations are caught in, every day something happens. Customer gets the wrong quantity. Another customer gets a defective part. Uh, on another line, uh, preventive maintenance wasn't done and you have unexpected downtime. When you're in this fire phoning mode and things aren't done right the first time, costs are sucked out of the organization. They're not even on one line item called waste. It's spread out. Salary, expedited shipping, overtime, um, scrap costs. It's very hard to see. But if you take the time to analyze your cost of quality and you decide where the biggest drivers are and do more things right the first time, you'll see a lot of value. This is what some of the top leaders have told me that I categorize as uh, the Monday work. This is my decision to put it under Monday work. So the first one, LPAs are the most efficient use of a manager's time to get to the root of issues and to see potential problems before they become critical. Right? Most efficient use of a manager's time. The, this is um, a forward thinking a proactive statement that shows that there's value in using time to prevent problems rather than just react. The second quote I have on this page is, you cannot allow an LPA program to be run haphazardly. As I mentioned before about management by walking around. Yeah, a lot of engagement could come from walking around, interacting with operators, but if it's not run with discipline, choosing the right questions, asking them at the right periods of time, uh, reporting the data, reacting to findings, 
then you won't get the value. And the last quote on this page is, LPAs give you the ability to fix potential issues when you see them. Okay, think about that one. It's not fix potential problems after they happen or fix them after they get reported or when they're prioritized on some other Excel spreadsheet. The idea of a LPA is verify. If it's done right, excellent. If it's not, fix it right away. Remember, we're only putting things on an LPA check sheet that are the most severe, most costly problems that we want to avoid. If that doesn't require a corrective action, then you probably have the wrong questions on your layered audit. These should be the few critical things that allow you to do your audits quickly and drive with leverage, drive the biggest benefit to the organization. So my last slide before we go to the Q&A, I wanted, my intent was, you know, to answer the question, why should top leaders buy into layered audits? Well, when you're verifying the requirements, not just haphazardly, but regularly, you get more things right the first time. Do we want that? Sure. Why implement layered audits? We want to engage the entire workforce, not just part of them, not just some of the time. When we engage the entire workforce, it's going to positively impact our key performance indicators. We want that. And the last one, LPAs are, are Monday work. This isn't something that we maybe would do, that we'll do when we have a chance. We need to do this. We need to do this so we don't slip backwards. We, want to, we need to do this so that we stay competitive, and we need to do this to drive costs out of the organization. Rachel, I'll turn it over to you. I don't know if you have any questions that have come in, but I'm glad to, uh, you know, we, could, we planned about 15 minutes for Q&A if that we need that. Perfect. Yeah. So great presentation, Murray. Thank you so much. I'm sure uh, a lot of people got some great um, key takeaways uh, to take back to their leadership team. Uh, before we get into q and A, I I I wanted to let people know I'm going to have an offer for Beacon Quality, which is uh, our layer process audit software, um, at the end of our webinar here. But before I go into that, I, I'll, all I'll say is that you can get a free iPad. But before I go into that, um, we do have a few questions. Uh, so in, in spite, uh, here's the first question, in spite of the large benefits to the plant, uh, why does LPAs often get tagged as a quality department program? Mm. Well, one of the things we didn't talk about in the presentation was sometimes LPAs are required by customers. So here in Detroit, I work with a lot of automotive clients and several tier one, I'm sorry, several OEM automotive companies have made a requirement of their customers. Those requirements tend to come down through the quality system. In terms of automotive, it used to be TS16949, and now IATF16949. Unfortunately, those get funneled through quality. It has the word audit in it, and boom, all of a sudden you have the quality function that's shepherding something that should be run by top leadership. Um, I think that's the main reason. That's the main reason. The word audit, which we should change the verification and the requirement, it shouldn't be laid upon the quality department. If they saw the value, maybe some of the points you, you heard in the leaders I spoke with, um, you'll see it really is a, a top leader tool. It's a management tool, not a quality tool. Great. Um, quick uh, administrative question um, that I'll answer, and that is uh, uh, quite a few people have asked, will they, can they receive the slide deck and also the uh, recording of today's webinar? And of course, as always, we will be sending that out to you uh, right after the webinar, so be on the lookout for that email. It'll come through GoToWebinar, and then I'll also send another one, uh, just in case you didn't get it, uh, through our own email system as well. 
Uh, next question here, uh, should managers be involved in LPA audits and how, how, how should they be trained when it comes to, to actually conducting the audit? All right, that's a good question. Again, we have this problem with the word audit. There are other or audits in your organization that you probably require special unique training, maybe some technical skills, understanding of a standard. An LPA or layered process verification is a lot simpler. Uh, the, the content of what you're checking should be on the checklist. It should refer to some standard. So a sample question might be uh, related to uh, speeds or feeds on a piece of equipment, or it might be related to how the operator, specific way that the operator is handling the part. The content of what you're looking at should be in the question, and the only thing that the verifier, or if you want to call it an auditor, has to do is look at the question, observe the work, or interact with the operator, and make a decision. It conforms or it doesn't conform. So there's no special training. The, tr the training that I usually recommend to clients is to have someone shadow whoever maybe is implementing the layered audit program. If you do that, you want to make sure that your, your train the trainer, right, your model verifier is uh, doing a pretty good job. Be comfortable, relaxed. I'm going to use that word transparent again, right, transparent with maybe the operators or technicians that you're auditing. Introduce yourself. Uh, explain what you're doing, that it's important that things are done right the first time, and you're here to help them, right? If they have problems, we want to find it sooner rather than later. So in brief, I think I answered that, right? No special training, uh, training uh, model, role modeling, how an audit's done. It, the more structured your audit system is, maybe the easier it is, because all the information is on the check sheet or if you're using a smart tablet, everything's presented to the auditor. Maybe a picture, right? I like that in the electronic auditing systems and an Excel spreadsheet. You have what's the question, maybe the rationale, a reaction plan. As long as you could read and interact with an operator, uh, no other trainings needed. Great. And actually, um, since you brought up uh, the actual check sheet itself, we have a new check sheet on our website uh, that you can download for free. Uh, if you go to beaconquality.com and uh, you'll see a button at the top there and you can download your own uh, Excel spreadsheet, fully editable, um, that is a great example of how an, a layer process audit should uh, look. So be sure to go to our website, beaconquality.com to do that. Um, and you mentioned... And I'm just going to add to that, Rachel. You know, sure. There's places on that spreadsheet to, to customize it. And, yes. uh, you know, you're not going to be get the benefit unless you understand first, before you go to that spreadsheet, where the risks are in your organization. And then that spreadsheet can certainly help you if you address those top risks. Right. Right. Great. So, um, and you, you did mention software as a way to help um, with training and things like that as well uh, for layer process audits. So this next question kind of goes into that as well, um, where people have, uh, it, it seems like people have been, um, this one company has been doing LPAs for about five years, and now that they have a software to automate their audits and generate dashboards and reports, um, but top management doesn't review the re results. Um, any suggestions on how to change that? Yeah, so, the software could be great because once you're implementing layered audits, you can have a lot of checks going on, which means you're going to have some data. Uh, some of the tools like Beacon, or Ease Beacon, has a dashboard that makes it easy for management to review maybe which area, what types of questions, what kind of failure codes. So if management isn't paying attention to it, check to see what, where the connection is between their operational reviews and layered audits. The three strategies that I talked about, verification, engagement, and Monday work, probably should be in place to help top leaders know that LPA is important. You want to get to the point where they're asking about it. 
were layered audits done last week? Right? Who missed their audit? If they could start with those basic questions, then maybe you could get them engaged in looking at the dashboard and data that's coming off of your, um, your LPA software system. So start with the basics. Make sure they understand that audits need to be done. If they're missed, there should be some consequence because you don't know if things are running right the first time and you're missing opportunities to fix problems before they either escape to the customer or, or become pervasive problems. Great. Um, this question is for uh, about non Fortune 500 companies or, or even I would say non automotive companies that are required to do this. Um, have, have you had experience with those kind of quote unquote, the, the question here says ordinary organizations that have integrated LPAs uh, to spirit quality culture. Have you had that experience before? Um, I, so you're asking like more of the, like smaller organizations rather than large enterprises? Yeah, Is that exactly. What we're asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I think it's easier in smaller organizations because. Well, I've worked with several organizations that are like family owned, second generation, third generation. I really like working with those organizations because they do things not because the customer said they had to or because it's part of a quality requirement, but they do it because they see it's the right thing. Um, so rather than you know, giving a presentation like you just saw to try to sell them, they understand instinctively. Yeah, you know, our workforce is like family to us, right? These are our friends and neighbors. Um, we want to help them get things right the first time. So if we wait and react, everyone's always going to be frustrating. So a layered audit is what they've always been doing anyway, right? On the floor, their hands are getting dirty as well, um, you know, in many situations. And now you're just adding the discipline of not looking at everything and not looking when you want, but programmatic basis, understand top risks, understand that some things need to be checked every day, every shift, uh, the leadership at a minimum, once a week, and when you find problems, let's react. So it works very well. I think it's easier, more easily accepted in smaller organizations where people are used to wearing many hats as opposed to like a large corporate structure where someone says, well, you know, I have an MBA, and, uh, you know, I'm a controller, <laughs> I, why should I do, you know, how to, well, because if we're not making good parts, you're not going to have a lot of, uh, you know, money to count. Right. <laughs> that seems like a good motivation right there. Um, right. We have a couple more questions, but before we get to it, I wanted to make sure that anyone that needs to drop off here soon um, knows about our uh, offer that I'm going to have. So I'm going to change presenter to me and oh, okay. show my screen here just for a second. You. There we go. Hopefully you can see that there. So Beacon Quality is a mobile auditing system uh, specifically designed for layer process audits, but also 5S, HSE. Um, I've also heard of some companies using it for Gimba as well. Um, and we wanted to offer a we always have a free trial, 30-day trial, which you can you can always get on our website, beaconquality.com. But for the attendees of today's webinar, if you sign up for this free trial by June 29th, and you actually conduct the uh, free trial, so you go through all the steps that I'm going to go through here in a second, you will get an Apple iPad, the, the latest one, sent to your office. Um, this is also compatible with our iOS app, and not only that, but you, if you purchase by August 15th, uh, you'll also receive a four-hour consultation with Maurice and Samar for free. So this includes a, an assessment of your current system, a review and add questions, as well as feedback and reports. So um, I noticed some of you, quite a few of you, have not really implemented uh, layer process audits yet. So this would be a great way to get started on the right foot. Uh, you can see the bit.ly link at the bottom there. 
And what's included with your free trial is, of course, that four-week uh, guided pilot. So you don't just sign up and download the software and conduct some audits. We actually help you set up everything, including coming up, you know, loading up your questions. How are you going to schedule this out to your team? How are you going to roll it out and, and even train some of your managers on how to use this, how to download it to your mobile device. And of course, our, our software is compatible not only with uh, iPads and iPhones uh, and iOS devices, but also Android um, Windows applications as well. So you get the full access of, of Beacon Quality. You'll get weekly one-on-one -on -one training with our team here. And then you'll get up and running in hours, really. So that one-on-one -on -one training after the first week is really more of coaching, helping you through some of the common uh, hiccups that might happen. And then if, again, if, if you go through that process, we'll send you an iPad, no purchase necessary. We just re request that you at least try our software. So the Bitly link is there. Our only request is that you are in manufacturing. Uh, you are not currently a customer. If, if you are a customer, but your plant in particular is not doing, uh, has not implemented Beacon Quality yet, you do qualify for this. So go ahead and sign up. Um, and there's some other small things on our web on, on the form there that kind of tells you who's qualified and who's not. But for the most part, for the most part, we're just looking for uh, manufacturers and not, not current customers. So uh, another question here for, for you, Marie. Mm -hmm. So can layer process audits be designed for multiple plants to drive the quality mindset for a corporation or should it only be focused uh, to the plant? Well, layered audits really require just process. Uh, and so like what Rachel said about for the software, you, you want to have manufacturing, but the idea of a verification could apply anywhere. Um, how you hire new employees, uh, how you ship product, uh, maybe you do a layered process audit on an engineering change process. If there's process steps with requirements or standards, how do you know that they're being done right? right? You check or fancy word, you verify, or another word, you audit. It can be done at all levels of a company. Uh, you want to be careful that you don't make the audits too generic and ask questions that are too easily answered yes without checking, like is the uh, you know engineering following the test instruction? Well, you'll want the answer to be yes, but you got to get into the nuts and bolts of what could go wrong what behaviors you're looking for, what behaviors you don't want to see. We don't want a whole paragraph, but a quick checklist that might say, was the, the voltage turned off before the part was removed from the test stand? Right. Very objective, you could say yes or no. It doesn't require opinion, it can be validated quickly, and it's important to the process. So I think LPAs or process verifications can be applied in a, a large number of areas matter of cost benefit, right? What's the cost of things going wrong versus the cost of administering the check? So we've helped a number of companies not just implement LPA, but move on to the software when they saw the administrative burden, you know, getting a little bit of heavy of printing out Excel spreadsheets and then reloading data. It could be done manually, but at a certain point, the software is helpful too. Also, we see that millennials, you know, would rather go around with a smartphone rather than a clipboard. And uh, even people that aren't millennials, once they get the hang of doing it on the on a, on a tablet, uh, it just makes it makes it more elegant. <laughs> it's a more elegant process. I like the idea with with ease, where you could uh, you could see a picture of what the conforming or non-conforming condition should be on your smartphone. You could also take a picture of what you saw to show evidence of what it was. Say on June 19th at uh, you know whatever 11:54 a.m. Right. And are there any um, other questions, Rachel? I see we're coming towards the end. 
we are coming towards the end. And um, just to clarify a little bit on the software, of course, the question should be specific to each plant, like you mentioned, but um, there are dashboards within Beacon Quality for the enterprise level so that uh, managers can see across plants uh, metrics that make sense. You know, are audits being done? Are they being done on time? How many audits are being missed? How many uh, mitigations or non-conformances are being found? And how quickly are they being closed out? All that kind of great information can be in one dashboard for multiple plants. Where And then you can also have dashboards and metrics per plant as well. So you can have both views. The last question right. is a higher like the hierarchy view where you could kind of like drill down to a facility or a line. Um, exactly. Even though each plant may operate separately, they're, they're on the same database basically within the software. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So last question here is um, our top leaders are often on the plant floor and have a great relationship with the workforce and many have been there for like 20 plus years and yet our, our plant leaders are our plant leaders are fine check checking on work and engaging with individuals uh, but top management is hesitant to ask questions on uh, LPA checklists so they often skip the formal mm -hmm. audit mm -hmm. so how how do you how do you get them to be less hesitant and to ask those questions? Well, I'm thinking of a couple things. One is, um, it sounds like maybe quality road questions that aren't meaningful to, for top management to ask, like, is mm -hmm. the gauge calibrated? Is the operator wearing PPE? Kind of like checklist kind of items. The question should be driven back to where you had the biggest pain, um, maybe a warranty issue last year, maybe a safety issue. It should be the critical few things in the organization that no one wants to go wrong, including top management. So that would be maybe a cut diagnostic is do you have the right questions on the, on the check sheet? Another is were top leaders, did, did they have this training? Right? That was a question someone asked earlier is what's the training? And I said, it's really pretty simple. They just need to shadow someone, but have they done that? Or are they kind of creating their own version of what a layered audit is? Sounds like they've got half the half half of the answer by going to the floor and interacting, but they're missing the second half. That it's not just anything; it's some critical things that we want to watch and verify to make sure we're doing it right. Those are my thoughts on that one. Great, very very helpful. Well, thank you again so much, Marie, for uh, being here today. Um, well, thanks for sponsoring it. I always uh, like to talk about layered audits. So uh, if I could help, let me know. Will do, thank you again. And, and I hope we can have you again here soon. So um, again, a recording and the slide deck will be sent to everyone here today. Uh, we thank you for being here and have a great day. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks everyone for joining in. Bye.